Good afternoon, everyone. Wildfires in California, wildfires in Europe. Let's compare the total burned acreage. Media claims it's because of global warming. 1937, 21 million acres. 2008 to 2017 average, 3.5 million acres. Devastating wildfires in 1868 as well, California. Overall, total acreage burned down since the 1930s. How about the EU? Down since the 1980s. What about the heat? Massive heat wave? Oh, that's 1930. Looking at the days over 100 and 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, it was much warmer in the 1930s. And with that being said, the climate chaos on our doorstep due to a weakening magnetosphere and our sun entering a grand solar minimum, you're going to be responsible for substituting and growing some of your own food. TrueLeafMarket.com. Heirloom and organic seeds for any grow zone on the planet, microgreens and sprouts. The Adapt 2030 link is below, as well as the link to Mini Ice Age Conversations tri-weekly podcast with more in-depth analysis on all the changes around us, how it's going to affect your life over the next five years. Now, as we've seen from Europe to the United States, massive wildfires, forest fires, the devastation with the loss of life, homes, firefighters stretch to the brink. Best wishes out there to everybody involved in these scenarios. And it is really a shame that the media is pushing this to their own agenda to try to prove a point that things are still revolving around CO2 and the whole climate debate. The fires are here because of something that's happening with the climate. And everywhere you look from New York Times into the mainstream media, It's all about the number of acres that have been burned. Talking about California lying waste. Well, you know, they are building in different areas than they did in, say, the 1950s. Same with Europe. Everybody's encroaching in on the forest, building in the forest. That's a new thing. Put a cabin in the forest. Put a house in a forested area for neighborhoods. This is partially responsible. But even AgWeb picking up on the story Nearly bringing 1.5 million acres in this latest fire from California combined total. So I thought, all right, well, what is the exact total? This comes off Tony Heller's site. National Interagency Fire Center year-to-date statistics. This only goes up through July 25th of 2018 from the beginning of the year at 3.9 million acres burned. But if you look at the very bottom, you'll see the 10-year average from 2008 to 2017 is 3.5 million acres burned with last year, again, at the top of the chart, 2017, 5.1 million acres. So this year is actually less burned acreage than it was last year. The media is going to have you believe that this is epic all-time fire raging storm out there, but it's really just the sixth most acreage burned so far. And even if we jump back to 1937, look at that. Burned acreage, 21 million acres. And so far in this combined fire amount, it's only been 3.9 million acres. That's literally five times less than what was burned in 1937. And then if you even take it back to 1868, they talk about this being the fire of all fires. It went down hills where it shouldn't have gone. It it was almost as if wind was present. When you read the accounts, fire's going downhill. It's an amazing account of what was burned and how unusual and rare the fire fronts were spreading in all directions at the same time, north, south, east, and west. And the damage being immense, well, we've seen it, but back then it burned even more than today. So taking a look back in time, Let's go back for 318 years of time to be exact. Forest fires, more common during the Little Ice Age. Grand solar minimum is where we're heading. This is the reason a lot of things are happening with the mixed up weather. I want to zoom this out for you here. Starting on the very left side is the year 1700. And as we approach 1750, 1850, we can see these are the most massive upticks in the number of fires coming through there. But when we come down over to the right side where we are, but it declines. And then the chart stops circa 1980 or so. So I thought to myself, all right, I want to fill that in and bring you a better perspective. So this one brings us all the way up to 
the end of last year, 2017, and you saw what we had for 2018 so far in that black graph that I showed you earlier with 3.9 million acres burned. This is from the U.S. Forestry Service off of CFACT, 1926 to 2017. Now, even discounting the 1750 and 1850 maximum forest fires, we go back to the 1930s, we can see that even today's what's considered above normal, and it was still only one-fifth of what was total acreage burned back in the 1930s. Now, you should also be asking some of these newspapers and news outlets, how are they reporting that it's such a, an Armageddon-type event? They'll have you believe it's only happening now because of the changing climate, when you can clearly see through the historical record, we're at a pretty low total going forward. Although it's terrible to be involved in such a thing, and my prayers and wishes for your safety are out there during these events. And also I'll bring you another chart here. This is even a little further back. This is from 1916. That previous chart in the red was from 1926. So you see wherever you're looking, we're getting the same information on the time dates here. Moving averages, annual acreage burned far higher in the 1930s. So I thought, all right, well, how much is going on over in EU, the European Union? That would be Portugal, Spain, France, Italy, and Greece. They encompass 90% of all the burned areas, as a matter of fact, through Europe. Well, since it looks around 1985 at a million acres burned, they have been declining since. Also, speaking of Spain and Portugal, extreme heat over there, that's from the equatorial vortex because our jet streams are shifting due to a weakening magnetosphere as we intensify deeper into this new expanding eddy, grand solar minimum. Now, we keep hearing about heat during this time, too. It's the all-time record heat, 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 everything. Heat wave reached the pinnacle yesterday up to at least 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Drought in the worst history of our nation in the United States, if you're a citizen there. Oh, this comes from 1930, August 4th. Well, we keep hearing the exact same thing today, right? So let's compare some hot temperatures because the media loves to talk about temperatures. So let's compare. This comes from the University of Alabama Huntsville. This maps out through time, days at at least eclipsing 100 degrees Fahrenheit and also eclipsing 105 degrees Fahrenheit. We are on the far right of the chart Media is telling you it's the hottest ever, hottest ever, hottest ever, but what happened in 1935? What happened in 1955? How about 1980? We're lower than that. So I thought, all right, this is just a single chart. It's overlaid. Let's see if we can dissect it a little further. So this is a 100-year chart, 1918 to 2018. All climatology network stations in the United States. Oh, I see that huge spike again back in 1930s, and it looks like it's been declining ever since. Those are the days at 100 degrees Fahrenheit or above. So I thought, all right, well, maybe if it's 95 degrees Fahrenheit and above, we could see some sort of uptrend. I still see that spike in the 1930s. Again, this is a 100-year chart. All climatology stations. Oh, and the trend, that's a downward trend. So I thought, okay, well, if it's really going to be that hot, at least the day is above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. We're just going to blow through the record. It's got to be, well, every day has got to be at least above 90. The way the media is portraying it, eh, everything's cooking. The planet's cooking. Everything's like hundreds of degrees. I also see multiple spikes here, 1930s, 1950s, 1980s, but that trend is down also. Makes you wonder. And also Stephen Goddard, excellent post right here, August 4th, 1897, 119 degrees, Prescott, Arkansas. You know, I guess it was all the buggies they were burning back then. Or maybe we should just put, put fart packs on the horses because we could have stopped runaway global warming back in the 1800s. They didn't see that coming. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. As you can see clearly with the data presented that the media is, well, still on the bandwagon of its CO2. They just are not talking about the grand solar minimum or effects from the sun and repeating cycles because there's an agenda behind it. That's my own opinion. They're keeping you unprepared for some sort of agenda. It could be global taxes. It could be many other things. But in my opinion, they're absolutely not telling you the truth.
And if you're looking for a timeline moving forward to see how much more intense our weather is going to get, how much more intense next year the fires will be, how intense the snowstorms, blizzards, wipe out of our crops are going to be moving forward, those are the north and the south polarities or magnetism in the sun. The wider that wave is or the wider that the spread between the two lines is, the more intense our weather becomes. Have you noticed since 2015 the waves becoming wider? Global media is still trying to explain it as CO2, but the uptick in the extreme weather follows this chart exactly. This is the new grand solar minimum intensifying. All the links are in the description box below so you can do some of your own research. And if you'd like more in-depth analysis on issues such as this, try weekly podcasts, many Ice Age conversations available anywhere on the net that you can find a podcast.